It's tournament season at first, and the next big one at Santa Anita Gulfstream and Express Bet is the Ultimate Betting Challenge this Saturday, March the 2nd. The Ultimate Betting Challenge features every race at Gulfstream Park on Fountain of Youth Day and Santa Anita Park on Big Cap Day, making it a coast-to-coast -coast betting extravaganza. Buy in for $6,000, 5,000 live bankroll, and compete against players from around the country for massive cash prizes and NHC seats. First, we'll seed four NHC seats to the prize pool, and all cash entry fees will be distributed back as prizes. At 150 players, that's $150,000 in cash prizes, plus those four NHC seats. Play in the UBC on site at Gulfstream or Santa Anita, or jump in online with ExpressBet. Head over to expressbet.com slash tournaments for more information and to register to play. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer kicking off a 50 cent pick four at Gulfstream Park on Fountain of Youth Saturday. Race number seven is the McDermott. This is a three turn turf marathon. We're going 11 furlongs. Let's take a peek at this field. No surprise. Michael Maker has three in here, Mike. Todd Pletcher has a couple, but the speed of the race is main event. And really for him, it's all about distance, isn't it? It's all about distance. He is supposed to be maybe on a lonely lead early in this race, though, Dan. And that could be a big advantage if you can see out the trip. Um, listen, uh, you know, getting in the right position in these races is very important. And I don't know, man, who who is the standout in this race? Who's the horse to beat? I have no idea. It's a really good betting race because it's such a competitive field. So maybe this time form U.S. pace projector gives us some clues. You know that main event is going to be on the lead if he breaks, just stretching out with his sort of speed. The eight Cali Canthus may be somewhat class compromised. The nine six minus has a little bit of tactical speed. And then you've got your late closers, Mike, including the five catch that party who might have been a little bit pace compromised last time out in the Connolly at Sam Houston. Yeah, he certainly was. We'll see how this, I mean, I find it hard to argue with main event just being on a clear early lead in this race, Dan. For me, if he's not absolutely loose in here, it's because Tawny Port is a horse who winds up going forward again in this race. Two starts back um, at Delaware. They went a very enterprising pace with this horse and he paid the price. Main event is the number one. He's already a graded stakes winner during the Gulfstream Championship meet. He won the Fort Lauderdale. Two starts back going nine furlongs using his patented running style going right to the front. Now they tried that trick in the Pegasus World Cup. That was a wickedly fast pace. If you believe these fractions, he tried to go a third quarter in 22 and three after going 23, 23 for the first half mile. It's no wonder he paid the price in the stretch against one of the better mares we've seen in the uh, last few years in warm heart. So it's a little bit of a class drop for main event distance is a question not sure he's got that ton of distance pedigree yeah distance is it's a huge question for him but he either way he's a very dangerous horse in here on the early lead he actually did not run poorly in the pegasus world cup turf last time i don't know if i believe those fractions are not damn but um either way he was cutting a legitimate pace in that race and he got tired only in the final furlong i don't fully trust him in this race i don't trust him to get this far but i'm not arguing with this spot for weaver He'll be ridden by Javier Castellano. John Velasquez aboard the two Anglo file. The source was a graded stakes winner last year at Kentucky Downs, taking the Dueling Grounds Derby. His last start was his first race against older horses. It was the W.L. McKnight. I think it was a little bit better than it looked on paper. He ran okay in that race. Um, he was sort of on the outside all the way around the track. It, it didn't make any difference at all in there, Dan. He wasn't going to win regardless. I guess you could say he did the best that he could with that trip. I like him as a distance horse. I think it's pretty clear from his PPs that longer distances are better for him. I'm just not sure how good he is. The three is headline news, and he's stretching out for a really good horseman in Jimmy Toner. You get the feelings had to nurse this lightly raced five-year-old through various physical ailments. I thought he ran well last time out in an allowance race going a mile. There's just no pace. 24, 47, and three. He's over and behind horses looking for a seam with a lot of work to do, and he's going to make this close at the end. This horse has ability, and the fact that Toner wanted to run him a mile and a quarter and only a second lifetime start makes me think that he thinks this distance will be fine. I like, that's what I liked about him too. It feels like maybe the, the toner thinks that distance is what he wants. And now we'll just see if he's good enough to go with horses like this. Dan, I don't agree. I don't really look at his last race the same way that you do. I didn't think that he ran that well in there. He certainly improved. He got the right trip though through between horses. And it's not like the winner was up on the pace. The winner was off the pace as well and just sort of easily outfinished this horse. I don't know, man. I, I won't be surprised when he, you know, sort of 
is competitive at a pretty big number, but I don't really love this horse. The four is starting over, making his second start off about a two and a half month layoff. He ran second in this race at a big price. This is the WL McKnight going a mile and a half. Now for this distance, this pace was very fast and this race went to closers. The Chad Brown trained Francesco Clemente comes from way out of it to win. Starting over is running on a bit at the end of this race for second. No match for the winner, however. Yeah, nobody was uh, was a match for the winner of this race, but he is pretty game here to to get up for second at the end. He never looked like he was going to win. I didn't even really feel like it looked like he was going to get a piece of it at mid-stretch, but he did well to get up uh, for second in that race. He can be closer to the pace this time, and maybe it makes a difference. The five catch that party is making his third start of the form cycle, and you can make uh, an argument that he's a bit dirtied up coming into this race. Two starts back, they tried him in the two-mile eight challenge Jerkins. He didn't run badly at all in that race. And then last time out at Sam Houston, and it was a race where his stable mate, Diner Drive, scored, but a race that was dominated up front. And if you know anything about this guy, he needs some pace help. He, he really does. It's, it's unclear that he could really go with these horses too, Dan. So that, that's a big question he has to answer. Um, the graded stakes races might just be too tough for him. But he had. You, I think you're supposed to give him a pass for the last one. He totally blew the break. And then that was not a race where you wanted to be closing. Like you, I thought he ran fine going two miles Two starts back. Maker has stretched this horse out, and he's actually done pretty well when circumstances are in his favor. Having main event in this race with all that speed, it only helps catch a party. I don't know if he's good enough, Dan, but I'm a big fan of this horse, and if he gets the right trip, he will come running. And stretching out has just been the angle for Maker. He finds horses that really want distance and gives them what they want. He reclaimed Dyna Drive, four starts back, turned him into a graded stakes winner. This was at Sam Houston, the John B. Connolly, and Raylo Gutierrez gave this horse just a wonderful trip. There was no pace throughout and thus no closing going on. And he had Dyna Drive sitting right up close to the pace, and he's going to forge by this horse to win. Beat a couple of next out winners, got a strong buyer speed figure. His tactical speed allows him to get good trips. Some tells me this is a tougher spot though i think so too but he did finish this race off pretty nicely i just don't know what to make of it dan because he just got the right trip in there and it felt like nobody ran outside of him and the horse that was on the lead so i didn't really know what to make of that race and when you start going through some of his other races this is a horse who was a stakes winner a couple of years at saratoga from last to first i mean he had no speed at all earlier on in his career now he has tactical speed I don't know, man. I don't trust him. I know he can win here. I don't trust him. Tony Port was a good horse on the dirt when trained by Brad Cox. He won the Ohio Derby, placed in the Jim Dandy. When Christophe Clement got him, he wanted to put him on the turf, and he almost immediately paid dividends, winning the John's Call, going 13 furlongs at Saratoga, three back. Boy, was he aggressively ridden, as you put it, in the Cape Henlopen at Delaware. It looked like on paper he had that field under a barrel. Trevor McCarthy put the pedal to the metal. Maybe he went a little bit too fast in that race, and maybe the Sycamore was the sign that he needed a little break. Maybe. Yeah, the, the ride to back didn't make a lot of sense, um, and, it, and it, it did cost him at the end. He didn't run well in the Sycamore last time. I thought he got a good trip in that race and just wasn't good enough. I, I'm conflicted about this horse, Dan. I, I actually feel like there's a chance he could be the favorite in here. Um, personally, I don't like any of his turf races. I, I like him much more as a dirt horse. Kelly Canthus is one of two Todd Pletcher train rowers. Todd's really taking a guess here with this source, stretching him out all the way off a first level allowance win over the Tapita at Gulfstream, a race where he kind of made two moves, but he also had the run of the inside here turning for home. He's going to get up and win. And being by English Channel, you would think turf marathons might be just what the doctor ordered. That being said, my boy, oh boy, he's game to win this race. You're going to have to do a lot better. He's going to have to really improve. I did like that win from him there. It was a mile and 70 yards on a different surface, though. Dan. I don't, I don't know what to make of him. His turf form, it leaves a little to be desired. He's one for five on the surface. The only win when he broke his maiden on the lead at 30 to one. He's not making the lead in here. I don't know. I just thought this was way too tough a spot for him. Pletcher also has the 9-6 minus, who's a true stayer. He finished third in the two-mile jerkins, and he was only beaten uh, less than a length for all of that money. They tried him on synthetic last time out. It was kind of a fast-paced race for that distance. The horse that won that race came back to place with a 91 buyer. But to me, he's kind of a one-pace type, Mike, that kind of probably needs the right trip. He's going to, that, exactly. He's going to need a trip in here. The distance is a good one for him, though. Um, I, I don't think you can argue with that. I thought he actually ran really well in the Jerkins two starts back when he finished just ahead of catch that party. I mean, they both ran pretty well in that race. I don't know. He, of the Pletcher horses, he makes the most sense in here. I'll just wait and see what kind of price he is because I'm not sure he's some kind of star.
the King Max returned off a little bit of a layoff and was wired by main event in the Fort Lauderdale. He was running at the end of that race despite failing to change leads. And then he was likely in a little bit tough in the Pegasus World Cup. It's really about distance for him, isn't it? He's got those European bloodlines. Uh, this is a horse that I think is still unexposed. Yeah, I would argue that he's the most talented horse in this race. I just don't know about, you know, stretching him out again in distance because it's so it hasn't really worked out for him necessarily um, since he's gotten over here. They were reluctant to stretch him out overseas too. I, I don't know. I think he's the best horse in the race, but he could be a relatively short price in here, Dan, and he doesn't have to love this adding distance. Let's take a look at our top picks for the grade two Mac Dermida. I need Tawny Port to leave me alone. Main event's got to get to the lead, but if he gets to the lead, A, he's got to relax and drop the anchor. Then he's got to see out the trip. But if he does get a lonely lead, he's good enough to win this race. Catch that party's going to be a really good price. And if main event doesn't prove rateable and Tony Port goes after him, all of a sudden you get that electric pace scenario that yeah. works for the maker trainee. It's one of the, yeah, it's one of the keys to the race to me. And, I'm, and I'm, I do think main event's dangerous. I have him in there. I just didn't trust him, but I do think he provides pace. That's what catch that party needs. I'm a big fan of his. Not a big fan of anybody else really in this race. I'm hoping he gets a setup and comes running. Let's go with the maker number, 56110. I'll go 16107 in the Mac Dermot. It's a sensational Saturday at Gulfstream Park. Of course, the feature is the Fountain of Youth. Good luck.